It's a long story. Is it worth it? Totally. There was something that happened to this bag. I used to think that I should feel bad about this. You're already moving on to another thing. And is that greed focused more on the customers that do? Happiness is progress. Hey guys, my name is Amy if you're new here. So today we're filming my very first 2023 Q&A and I've got all your questions on my Instagram. The very first question is from Miss Jazz M. Are you still keeping your Chanel 19? Why or why not? Here's my Chanel 19. She's beautiful. I love, 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 love her. The answer to the question is that yes, I am keeping it because I have it and I don't have any intentions on selling it. Your question is still valid because I may still have a bag, but I still have an intention to sell it at a future date, but um, not for the 19. Within my whole Chanel collection, the 19 is still, uh, as I always said, is still my most practical Chanel bag. The one that is so carefree, so practical, carefree, super versatile. I, I mean, it's more of an everyday style rather than an evening or an like a dressy style, but that's okay because I'm not always dressy. And even if I'm dressy, because I tend to like dressier styles, it doesn't mean that I can't take it to a nice dinner or anything, right? Like it's just a little casual. The other thing about Hermes is that none of those bags will be able to replace the functionality and the practicality of this bag, if that makes sense. So the next one, which is very similar to this question is from Na Tu. Can you choose one between the Chanel 19 or the Gabrielle? It had its run, right? It had its good days. Uh, it, it was still controversial as a style because when it came out, not everyone loved it, which is fine. We don't have to love everything. Uh, but between the two styles, I will still have to choose the 19. Not because it's newer. It is, of course, newer. But um, don't get me wrong. I love the, the Gabrielle. So it's not like it's going anywhere. But I think... Again, if I went back to comparing all the functionality, how easy it is to carry. For a Chanel bag, aside from the 22 bag, which I did own for a brief time, aside from that one, the 19 is literally the best Chanel bag out there because, let's be real, a Chanel flap, classic flap, is too formal, usually too serious. It, it doesn't fit a lot. Even if you're the type to downsize, you're not always going to want to downsize. And so this really is a good middle ground, whereas the Gabrielle, unless you have a bigger size, um, will not fit the same amount. And when you go up the sizes, it gets pretty heavy and clunky. It's kind of like a brick, right? Carrying a brick around, which is why I still prefer the mini size or the small size that I have. Um, so there's a lot going for the 19 that the Gabrielle does not have. Um, one thing that the Gabrielle does have and that excels more at, I think it's like the originality and just like the uniqueness of the design. Those of you who do love this style will know and those of you don't that don't and don't understand it won't and that's fine. And so, um, but yeah, if I had to choose just one, I will still go for the 19. So that just goes to show how much I love the 19. Geraldine Vance. Chanel or Hermes if you can only have one? Oh my god. That is probably the hardest question without offending either type of fans, right? Like a Chanel fan versus an Hermes fan. Um, but if you get offended that easily, then that means it's more you than me, right? Like I, I'm trying, I'm always trying to be diplomatic and tact and like try to be as open and everything and not be too serious about these things. But I know for a fact that I can never really please everyone because that's just the reality. But yeah, so that's even how my thumbnail was between Chanel and Hermes doesn't necessarily mean these two bags, but just the brand. I'll have to say Hermes. And that is me giving my most genuine answer. I know a lot of people will not understand that, especially I know um, for a lot of the viewers that follow me for many years or new viewers, doesn't matter who, there's still going to be a bigger population of people that will love Chanel, LV, and like the other brands more than Hermes. A lot of people just don't understand Hermes. I'm one of those people, but I was never really against it. I was just 
I just don't really understand because I, I never got into it. Therefore, I never understood. But today I heard a really, really good quote. And it says the following, happiness is progress. And I always thought about it before, like, why do I feel like I always have to strive uh, or I want, not that I feel like I want to always strive for the next thing. Like even when you achieve something, you, you're already moving on to another thing. And is that greed or selfishness or whatnot? Maybe. But at the same time, it is progress because I'm not always stagnant and staying at one place. It's sort of like an arguable point where you could say like, oh, that means you're you're never going to be happy, whatnot. Um, I don't see it that way. I really resonated with that quote. Let's say not about bags, right? Even if it's just like you are you woke up that day and you were really productive, you did a lot of chores and work and uh, you feel very motivated, that is already progress. And progress can be in any form. So anyway, I'm going on a tangent. I'm choosing Hermes because that's how I feel at the moment. I feel like for me, this is the ultimate holy grail. You can't go above Hermes. At this point, I can't see any other any other holy grail bags, accessories, or branding that I feel more, you know, like I, it's hard to put in words, but that's how I feel. And it doesn't mean that the, their bags are perfect. And it doesn't mean that Chanel is not perfect either. Like I, they all have their pros and cons. Like in all my reviews, I always say they all have pros and cons. Don't get it if it's not for you. Cause obviously like just because I get it doesn't mean that you should. In fact, you shouldn't. <laughs> Thank goodness you didn't ask me to choose one Elmez bag because then I don't really know which one. I honestly love both the Birkin and the Kelly right now. Sunday Rose 99. Do you ever feel like you buy from an essay just because they're nice or for any other reasons? Uh, yeah, I definitely think so. I uh, like outside of Hermes and Chanel because I am more familiar with those brands and you kind of have of a dedicated essay usually. So outside of those two brands, whenever I go into a shop, whenever I walk into some place and I really uh, click with a new essay, if they are nice, even if I didn't buy anything on that day because maybe I literally just walked in because I was curious, I heard about that new style, um, but I had no intentions on spending money that day. And that, that does happen to me. I don't always buy when I go shopping, but I will always keep that person in mind because they gave me such good services and we click so well. I think it's just human nature when when someone does something nice to you, you just want to return their favor. That's how I feel. And I know that's how people in general feel. Like I, I do believe that in general, human beings are, are nice. <laughs> they just want to be nice to whoever is nice to, to, to them and back to them. Right. And so, um, I definitely would buy sometimes just off of, them being nice to me, even if I didn't have the intention to buy. And so even if I didn't buy the first time, I would still go back and buy it from the same person. Because um, sometimes I just need more time to research, especially if it's like a really expensive thing. And so, yeah, I definitely think so. Roy Melendez, no question. Just wanted to say that I love seeing you enjoy your quota bags, using your quota bags. Thank you so much, babe. Oh my gosh. I. <sighs> I love them too. I I really am enjoying my Hermes collection so much. It's a long and very challenging journey, but it's also very rewarding. Like every time I do carry my bags, non quota and quota, but especially quota because quota bags are so hard to come by. But nowadays, non quota bags are hard to come by too. Uh, not just bags, everything is kind of hard to come by. I was so absolutely surprised to hear that not only handbags, Chanel, Hermes, watches which I knew about, Rolexes, like a lot of just high high luxury brands are very hard to achieve because nowadays it's all about the relationship and also how much you are spending which is part of the relationship. I was kind of surprised to find out that a lot of things nowadays are like that. So we're talking about cars, 
supercars, hypercars. I always thought that it was just like an Hermes thing, but it's not. It's literally everywhere nowadays. So um, anyway, I'm going on <laughs> on a tangent again. Next question from Chris Tan. If you could learn any language fluently, which one would you choose and why? That is interesting because I never thought of that. I'm pretty fluent in English. I'm pretty fluent in French. Rusty, but still I'm fluent because I can read, write, and, and understand and comprehend. Fluent in Cantonese in a sense that I can definitely speak and understand very well. It's only when it's very technical terms and if it's like written and if I have to read, then I can't do it very well. Um, and with Mandarin, I sort of can get by because I have a lot of, I had a lot of friends that spoke Mandarin. So I can get by definitely. Like if, if I was in China, I wouldn't be lost totally. So I think if I can just pick one language that I can really master fluently, I would have to say it's one of the Chinese languages, either Mandarin or Cantonese. Uh, like I am, like I said, I am fluent in Cantonese, but not in terms of reading, writing, and like uh, above a certain level, right? Like I've always just spoken Cantonese at home, grown up watching Hong Kong movies. So I, I can even talk pretty fast and understand a lot of slangs, but that is the level that I'm at, which I don't even know how to assign a level to it. So if I could become even more fluent, let's just say Mandarin. Let's just say if I could become very fluent in Mandarin, including reading and writing, because the writing is the same. I value my ancestry and everything. So I, I want to be part of it even more, if that makes sense, which I am, but I'm not so hardcore because I was born and raised here in Canada. Anyway, if that makes sense. Uh, if I couldn't choose a language that I'm already kind of familiar, I think I would choose Spanish because there's just, I mean, every time I go to Europe and if it's not English or French, then the other language that I don't really understand is Spanish. Manifesting things, 1970, her question is, what are your thoughts on the color gris belt, which is pearl gray? So it's an Hermes color. Um, I love it. I don't know if you maybe never hear me say it because I say it in French. Gris Perle is the same color as Pearl Grey or some people mispronounce it, Gris Pearl or whatever. Um, it's one of my favorite colors. I mean, if you look at my collection, right? This color, which is such... Oh, man, I still... am so in love with this bag. I just love this kind of gray because it's not so dark, but it's also not white, which is very easy to, it's very easy to wear with any light color outfits. It's also light enough, but dark enough that I don't feel so terrified <laughs> wearing a light color bag. So that's why um, Gris Belle, which is slightly lighter than this, I remember, Gris Belle, uh, will be perfect as well. It's one of my, it's one of the colors that I asked about even for my Birkin at the beginning. Originally, I asked for Gris Belle as well for my Birkin. And I just wanted to show the difference between, so this is my little Constance Slim. And this one is obviously uh, not going to look the same if it was in Epsom because mine is an exotic lizard, which is so so beautiful and rare. Gris Belle is really like almost like a light cool gray. This to me looks more like a taupe but anyway um I love it so there you go that's my my answer. Uh, honestly with colors, Hermes colors, I've grown to just love all of them. I think even if it's not my favorite color I will still appreciate it because they just do colors so well. How do you maintain a good relationship with your essay, Hermes or other brands? And this question is from Mal, Miles and Sid. I do have falling outs with some essays sometimes. That is normal and super reasonable when you are not the type of client that shops there frequently. I think it's just normal because they they have to be nice to you because it's part of the job, like you, you have to provide good customer service. So that is a given. But at the same time, if 
you as a customer don't give them business that often then it doesn't matter at the end of the day they will just focus more on the customers that do example i can give right now is that i have been more into Hermes in the past year well past two years now but like really in the past year i have definitely been paying more attention with building my Hermes collection rather than my Chanel collection and so I have not been shopping at, at Chanel so much and of course my past essay, my previous essay who left Chanel also played a role in it because then I now have to work with a new essay he's not so new to me anymore but still like I haven't bought as many things with him I still maintain a good relationship with my essay at Chanel but it's just a bit more distant and I think I can't really fault anybody for that just because I haven't really been spending that much there. And it's still a very courteous and friendly relationship, but it's just like I definitely felt it whenever I did have something in mind that I liked, I couldn't get it as easily. Not that it was very easy before, but it definitely feels a bit more distant now. So to answer your question, how do I maintain a good relationship? I think part of it is just you have to be yourself, but also be nice, polite, tact, all those things. I am also always still shopping actively, right, with that person and with that brand. And therefore you become more memorable that way just because you're always buying something with that person and frequently and that is the only way that I know that really does maintain a good relationship because let, let's just imagine it right like if if you are the essay and you have a lot of nice clients let's say they're all really nice people but some of them just always gives you business and some of them don't they might come every two three months then you tend to like not pay as much attention to them right because even they don't pay attention to you and you might even forget them. Lizzie C, do you ski? Yes and no. I knew how to ski, not having done it in so long and I just don't even have the leg strength now. Um, so the answer is probably no <laughs> for now. But I know how to, I knew how to. Sincerely, Miriam Shiv G. What's your favorite color in the Kelly Mini or the Swift Pochette? Going back to what we said earlier, I think I would really love and I, we're, we're trying to manifest it here help me guys help me out guys help me manifest this in my life probably any colors that looks attractive to me i will gladly and be honored to take but if i could really choose a color i think something like gris perle cré i mean even nata mushroom oh my gosh mushroom mushroom is like a really light white that is really bright but it has sort of like a neutral tone it's such a beautiful color those would be my top picks but honestly i also have this picture of this kelly that is two tones really bright red and the other half is like rose mexico something like that it's just so stunning like for me that would be also an ultra holy grail otherwise black <laughs> i know another black bag yeah i'll take a black Mini Kelly for sure. Um, there's so many colors I would take, honestly. Even even any of the really beautiful pastels that they have going on right now, like Bleu Pâle, Bleu Brume, Vert Fizz, like all of those beautiful, beautiful, pale, pale, pale pastel colors. I would love to get it in a Mini Kelly or a Mini Pochette. Great question though, thank you. Um, of course that in includes like gold, etube, like all of those neutral, great classic neutrals I would love. Any new sales coming to your personal shop? Oh my gosh, okay, this, so this question is from Melissa Miguel. Miguel. Um, well, thank you for calling my Instagram account a personal shop. I guess I don't really own a shop, it's just from my personal closet. I, um, I, I hate selling <laughs> but having said that I do know certain bags I just don't grab as much and I do um, you know like having you don't really know until you own them sometimes like having owned them for a while you also feel like those could be the next ones on the chopping block and especially when it comes to 
like building my LMS collection, you do have to maintain a very good relationship with your essay, right? Therefore, you're always spending, pre-spending, and it's a frequent thing. So it does add up really fast. And so for me, I, you know, one of the ways I manage that is that I let go of some of the stuff that I would rather let go to get the new stuff, even when it comes to pre-spending, not necessarily just a one in one out bag situation, which used to be more of like that. But now that it's a whole different sort of challenge, right? With pre-spending right off the back of my mind, I can already see a few. So let me just grab them. But every time I bring up or, or talk about, because you know, it's sort of like a topic of video, I get so much hate. I Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, because I'm just ignoring those people. So one of the things I am thinking of letting go is this belt because I have two chain belts. This is the first one that I bought. It's not even in my size and I hardly wear it now that I got the actual size that I wear all the time. So this is just uh, the 19, I think this is the 19B Chanel chain belt, which is really beautiful. And this is in size 80, which is why I, I don't wear as, as much because I'm not a size 80. Ugh, I'll just show it all at once because that's probably easier. Uh, but like I said, I'm not really doing an active sale right now. So it's just things that would be in my chopping block, chopping block uh, if I were to have to um, recuperate money for my next endeavor. So um, I know this is so new. The cocoa handle, I, I don't know what it is. I had three cocoa handles before including this one would be my fourth. I enjoy them, but not to the point where I, I feel like they would be part of my permanent collection. I used to think that I should feel bad about this, but you know what? There isn't this other really good quote that I heard about this lately. And it's, you know, I've been listening to a lot of different podcasts lately. A lot of them have been more business minded. I'm not starting a business by the way, but I just love listening to those things because I love listening to people who have a much broader mindset like it kind of shocks you a little bit when you hear something you're like oh I didn't think of it that way so anyway this lady she said don't be attached to your material things an example she gave is like she literally bought this property and they like the whole family loves it but uh, there was an opportunity to sell it for for a profit obviously like a huge enough profit that it would make total sense and it's not like they own only one property but she basically said where she's not attached to any of her belongings it's just things um which i think is well makes super good business sense in any case um i love the philosophy behind it so even though this bag is so new to me and um i still really love it like i i literally got it because of the color like look how good this color is it's like yellow it's like green and it looks good with light color it looks good with dark color but there's something about the cocoa handle that I always just like, you know, I just end up not, it just ends up not staying in my collection for a super long. If, if um, like if I had to chop, I, I would always just go back to the cocos, right? So that's one of them, the cocoa. This is the super mini. I don't always have to have a reason for letting things go, right? I think for me, it's just the fact that I, I have I have so many mini bags, so this is just another mini one. Again, I have to remind myself that I can't please everyone and there's always gonna be haters out there. So for this one, it's more because I have another bucket bag, which is the Hermes Picotin that I reach for way, 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 way more than this one. Even though this one does have the crossbody shoulder, but I've also noticed that I just love top handle bags so much. And the fact that the Picotin doesn't have a shoulder strap really does not even make any difference to me. So that's why having the two being a bit redundant, and this one is beautiful. Like Chanel doesn't make for a certain specific style, you won't be able to find it anymore. That's how I feel. So I think that one will also go really fast if I if I decided to let it go one day. Days Grace, yeah. How did you get two quota bags a few months apart? Congratulations, by the way. Okay, well, thank you for congratulating. Um, I didn't really want to get into this because I've been avoiding it. But I also, at the same time, I'm just going to say it. I actually did not get them a few months apart. I know you're confused. <laughs> um, 
I just didn't want to create drama. How should I say this? Because I'm trying to word it properly. It kind of is a long story, but at the time, I just didn't feel like explaining myself. And I'm not the type to create drama out of content that I know. Um, sorry, I mean, I'm not the type to create content out of drama. Meaning, um, there was something that happened to this bag that I didn't bother to make content out of. Um, maybe I should have. Maybe that was would have been a smarter idea. Maybe that would have, I don't know, made it more viral or something. But I'm, that's not me, I suppose. So I didn't talk about it. And I just waited till I got the bag before I showed it. I did reveal this bag only more recently in August which appeared to be a few months apart, but I actually received it, uh, or at least I received the offer in my first year. So I got this bag offer and literally the next day or actually the same night, I noticed that there was some issues and I texted my essay right away and I had to bring it back right away. They were gonna send it away for repair and I was told that they were going to rush it, that I would get it back hopefully sooner rather than later, which is why I was like, you know what, at that time I was like, well, what's the point in talking about it if I didn't even have to beg? And since they had told me, or they were hoping anyway, that I would get it back soon anyway, then I will just talk about it then. At the time, I just didn't feel like creating content around it it almost would sound like drama, which is not me. I'm not the type. And so that is why I only basically got the bag back in end of July and I revealed it in August. I basically didn't really have a quota bag, even though I did get the offer in my first year. And this is something that I, like I said, I just didn't feel like explaining myself. I didn't feel like it was necessary, but I guess in hindsight, I didn't know that it would be that intense that uh, you guys would be so hung up on the fact that I got these two bags uh, seemingly so close together, even though don't forget that I had shopped with my store for two years and getting two bags within two years is totally normal. I didn't feel like it was something to talk about. But anyway, that's what happened. Uh, there was an issue with it they were willing to fix it it was nobody's fault um it was not my essay's fault the thing is i could have returned it and waited for another one which i didn't know how long i really loved this exact one which was black with rose gold and you know at the time they were confident that if they rushed it it would just come back very soon Hope well they said hopefully soon they could never guarantee they did tell me that they could not guarantee it and we have to keep in mind that it was during the pandemic which i you know in hindsight i think it made sense even though they were trying to to put a rush for the repair uh in hindsight i could see why it took so long because it was in the thick of the pandemic it was a lot of closures, a lot of people getting sick. They had to send it all the way back to France. I'm sure there was customs involved. So there is a lot of just time constraints that was out of everyone's control, uh, including the managers that was trying to help me with the repair, which is why for me, the waiting period was way longer than just a year because even though I received the offer within a year, I had waited another, I don't know, nine months to get it back, which is a long time because during that time period, I was literally going crazy. You know that you have that item, but you just don't have it. You have it, but you don't have it. So during that time, I had bought a few things from Chanel just to kind of distract myself and they were, after all, Chanel is a brand that I love, so um, there was just a lot of turmoil. Anyway, it was a challenging year. It's still a very challenging journey, uh, to say the least, but these two bags were acquired one year from each other. It has been two full years um, from me shopping actively at my store, spending a lot of money for these things, so it's just... Um, is it worth it? Totally, because I would not otherwise get them. And 
it is definitely everyone's own choice on whether they pursue it or not. I got a comment about these things where they don't understand, which I think I'll just make a sort of discussion video around that because I think that's an interesting topic and I don't fault anyone for not understanding. That's not their fault for not understanding and they don't have to understand it if they don't see it, the point, but that is what happened. For people that don't really watch my videos through and through, will still think that I got super privileges or whatever, which I don't. I'm just a regu very regular client and um, I definitely don't have any special privileges. So in either case, thank you for the congrats. All the questions originated from my Instagram story post. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, please do because that's where I post my requests for questions. And that's also where you can see me in between all my YouTube content posts, but I am, I can't promise yet, but I am gonna try to post more frequently. And also uh, I'm trying different things out as well. So hopefully um, it caters to your taste. Thank you so much for watching. If you're brand new to my channel, I'd love to have you back. Please do consider subscribing and yeah, talk to you next time. Bye.